from it. Destiny arrives all the same. An opening day at the 2020 Reebok CrossFit Games. We're ready to break it down for you here on Rogue Iron Game. This day had a little bit of everything in both Aromas and in Morgan Hill. We are at CrossFit Brethren in Morgan Hill. And uh, this one, whatever you're a fan of in CrossFit, there was something for you to like and maybe to loathe, especially for the athletes on this day. Sam Farber, Andy Sakamoto, and Pat Sherwood here with you. Guys, we've seen five events, very different tests. At the end of day one, what are your overall thoughts? I can sum it up in one word, brutal. I mean, this this could have been a games, you know, weekend, all crammed into one day. Five events down, everything from events that took less than two minutes to over an hour to everything in between to max effort lifts. And for the viewers at home, what you just probably don't understand is what these athletes are feeling right now, especially from the corn sack sprint. I have a tough time describing what that does to your legs. And then the only thing which might be more brutal is the trail run. They did them both in the same day. They're going to wake up tomorrow feeling like just death. <laughs> well, and I'd like to retract an earlier statement that I made when I said, you know, all of these athletes are prepared for the unknown and the unknowable. Well, I don't think any of them were prepared for that twist on the trail run, especially being the final event of today. And like you said, Pat, when you think about uh, the amount of leg work they had done, the amount of central nervous system work they had done with the, the max out on the back squat, the deadlift, uh, to be given that turn around and go back call uh, when they thought they were done is like you said just absolutely brutal and unfathomable thanks for nothing <laughs> <laughs> yeah quite the uh, mental hurdle to have to get over there in event five let's take you through it, it was described as a trail run about three miles in uh, total distance it ended up being a lot more than that and you know physically pacing yourself for a three mile trail run is very different from what these athletes ended up having to do it was all about the description which said plus or minus three miles and that plus or minus little did these athletes know that that was the big hint. Well, and then you have to factor in the uphill, the downhill, uh, like you said, the unknown distance, and there's some surprise that's coming and waiting for these guys. Here's the moment the athletes realized that the ranch run was a ranch loop. <laughs> The verbal version of Matt Frazier's reaction is not safe for TV. No, and that coupled with just a maniacal giggle that came out of Dave Castro when he delivered the news. And, you know, we're sitting here, quote unquote, enjoying it. But the mental wallop that these athletes endured, they paced themselves to empty the tank, get the, you know, 100 points, 75 points of what it was, then to realize, no, 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 you're at the halfway point. I can only imagine what that felt like. Well, and for some of these athletes, it was actually a gift. And we saw that in Katrin David's daughter. You know, she didn't set a blistering pace out front. We kind of thought, oh, this isn't her event. Well, the, the gift actually was uh, from Dave Castro when he said you had to turn around. Matt so, Frazier takes the win here in event when he was leading at the turn ends up overcoming the uh, mental hurdle and as you mentioned David's daughter able to take advantage of the extension. So at the end of event five there, there were some major major changes here it's hard to you know overstate how big that was on the men's side the the. Uh, visual reaction you saw from Matt Frazier is very entertaining, but it doesn't end up influencing the leaderboard as much. Noah Olson was able to take advantage. He'd come into the turn in fourth place, ends up le uh, wrapping things up in third, and that's the difference of a podium position, guys. Yeah, this is exactly what Noah Olson did. He, he didn't start off with a great uh, first event, but he's been steady through the next four events, uh, and he did exactly what he needed to do to put himself back, like you said, Sam, in, in podium uh, contention. 
And that's the great thing, regardless of how dominant the individual in first place seems to be, this scoring system with only five athletes is significantly different than anything we've dealt with before. Usually when there's a field of 30 to 40 athletes, you'll have people sneaking in, so to speak, causing some distractions, mixing things up. We've, we're having massive swings. At the After every single event, we have an entirely new looking leaderboard, at least in spots two through five, and I expect that to continue. So the excitement is not over. And on the women's side, the change was even bigger in terms of the results at the turn to the results at the end. Tia Claire Toomey was the leader at the end of three miles. And as you can see, Katrin David's daughter ends up taking first place in just over an hour. You know, Katrin Davis' daughter is just showing how incredibly impressive she is. She loves adversity. She embraced it and absolutely made the most out of it. So there's a lot to break down here. Let's start with how these athletes handled the surprise. Again, the, the visual reaction from Matt Frazier, uh, it's very entertaining. It doesn't end up impacting his final results, but in, in other aspects, the race for the podium for the guys, uh, the race for first place in this event for the women, it was a huge change. Right, and, and this was, you know, it was a sprint to what was thought to be the finish line between Frazier and Medeiros, and to just see uh, Matt Frazier's reaction there when Dave tells him, nope, turn around, go back up the course. I can't imagine what was running through his head at that moment. And Medeiros and Frazier had it worse than anyone else, right? Sure. Because they didn't get to see anyone else running by them and kind of put some pieces of the puzzle together. So Medeiros just bang, turned right around and did it. Fraser, you know, he had a, a, a moment or two of, I'm very unhappy with you, Dave, but then pulled it right back and just took off running. And we even saw Jeffrey Adler as as uh, Medeiros and Matt were running back up the hill and he was running down. He looked very confused. Right. Like, what are you guys <laughs> doing? Where are you going? Yeah, understandably confused. Yes. It, it, very hard to throw Matt Fraser off his game. Dave Castro found a way for a moment at least to do it. Uh, Pat, I'll start with you. Who impressed you in event five for the Mets? Without a doubt, Justin Madero. So this is somebody that from the get-go I've been saying, I'm going to put a lot of pressure on him. I want to see how he performs. He's coming in already, you know, as a rookie, one of the top five fittest individuals in the world. And he's had a couple stumbles, but I'll tell you what, he hung with the champ on an event that everyone who's a fan of CrossFit knows Fraser is going to do well at. And he never looked scared. He never looked intimidated. He pushed the pace on several times. The lead going back and forth from Fraser to him, he never gave up. So I was very impressed with what he showed between the ears. He may respect Fraser, but he's not scared of him. And that says a lot. And it must be the day of the youngin then, because for me, it was Haley Adams. And, you know, while she has a running background and she's worked for years with Chris Hinshaw in aerobic capacity, we knew that this would be a good event for her. But what I loved watching on this event was her pushing the pace with two champions. On the way down, it was Tia Toomey. She hung right next to Tia the entire uh, first direction. And then on the way back, she pushed the pace on another uh, champion in Katrin David's daughter. She never let up. She hung right on their shoulder the entire time. And I mean, I am so impressed not only with Haley's day, but especially how she's handling herself going toe to toe against some of these champs. How about who disappointed in the trail loop? Uh, every now and then it's not fun to be correct on these shows. So, you know, I just had a feeling, you know, based upon some historical data that Brooke Wells, this was not going to be a very strong event for her. Without a doubt, her running has improved. She's been very vocal about that. She said COVID actually helped her focus on her running. But when it came out onto the trail, that's not really how it shook out. And this was kind of a bit of a sad theme for Brooke over the course of day one, taking a fifth, a fifth, a second and a first, which is fantastic but then ending the day with a fifth as well. This is, you know, there's a lot of pressure on Brooks since coming out of stage one, she took second place. You know, she was the next fittest athlete out of stage one, right behind the champ, right behind Tia Toomey. So all eyes on Brooke, especially being her sixth time showing up to the games. However, even though day number one has thrown some things at her that aren't quite going how she wanted to, she stuck with it, finished the run. And as we have seen once again with the leaderboard, Everybody has a shot at that podium, so the games are not over for Brooke by a long shot. 
And for me, Sam, it was Samuel Quant. Um, you know, he started off the competition great. He got a third place on event one, a second place on the corn sack sprint. Uh, and then he lost a little bit of ground, uh, picking up two fourth place finishes on both the CrossFit total and the handstand walk. Um, you know, to get a fifth place in this event is not what Sam needed to maintain that second place position. But here's, I want to put an asterisk by what I'm saying in that he's still only five points behind Adler, who's in fourth place, and he's only 40 points back from Je uh, Medeiros, who's um, in second place right now. And the fact that Samuel Quant is a games vet, he's been there four times before, he knows what a weekend of the games feels like. And when you look at that in comparison to uh, Jeffrey Adler or Justin Medeiros, I think experience is, is going to play to his strengths. Let's take a look at the impact on the overall standings. We'll go to the women first. And uh, this is the difference between having a massive advantage to having a solid advantage for Tia Claire Toomey. She was in first place at the turn, ends up finishing in third place in the event. It's the difference between having a 75-point lead and what would have been a 120-point lead. That might make a difference uh, as we go over the course of this competition. Also, Katrin Davids' daughter, she goes from fourth place in this event to an event win. She moves into a podium position should have her fired up uh, just like this final event clearly did. Good. I think I'm probably still a little high on adrenaline. It was yep. a tough day. It's a big day. Um, but there's always like some point of a weekend that I, I get a workout that like fires me up. Hell and I'm yeah. so yeah. glad that that came on day one and I'm yes. ready for a big weekend. Wow. Well, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Momentum can be so big in sports in general, and clearly Katrin David's daughter has some momentum there. Uh, almost like a, a agony of defeat to thrill a victory moment for her getting the news of adding three miles to her run there on the final event of the day. Here are your event winners. There's a whole lot of Tia Claire Toomey on the board, but a big event win at the end of the day for Katrin David's daughter really does change some of uh, the thinking here as we head into the rest of the competition. So we've got, uh, again, Tia Claire Toomey, three event wins. She had 300 points right out of the gate. A little bit uh, disappointing maybe on the back end of uh, the, the day there, the fifth place finish in the handstand walk, and then uh, had a first place finish in her head maybe when she was about to make that turn. What are the surprises outside of the uh, the, the twist there on event five from day one for the women, guys. Well, for me, it's it's the performance of Haley Adams on day one. So, you know, she is the youngest competitor at the Games this year, but she is no stranger to being at the Games. So she is the two-time fittest teen. This is her second appearance as an individual. And don't forget, last year, she got no, not only sixth place, but she was also Rookie of the Year. Um, and, and she started off today, I want to say, in a great fashion. She kind of went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tia Claire Toomey on a event one uh, and and it was great to see her handle that heavy barbell uh, shoulder to overhead. We didn't know how she would do with that. She did great. She gets third on the corn sack sprint, um, fourth on the total, and that's probably what was most impressive for me with Haley Adams because to us it was kind of a fifth place finish. Uh, she was stra she strategized in such a way and executed physically that she kept herself from a fifth place finish and only picking up 15 points. She gets third on the handstand walk in a field of a phenomenal handstand walking women. So to be sitting in second place after four, five events is just amazing to me. My surprise is a positive one as well, and, and that is Katrin David's daughter. What a tremendous finish to day one. She's showing why she's a two-time champion, former you know, fittest woman on the planet, because she competes so well. She understands that it's never over until the final rep, the final second of the last event on the last day. You never know how things are going to shake out. She did not have the greatest day one. Out of five events, three of them were in the bottom 50%. Certainly not where a two-time champion wants to be. But she brought it home on event number five. She entered that event in fifth place, dead last. But after taking first place in that, earning 100 points, she has rocket her, rocketed herself into third place and now occupies one of those coveted podium spots. 
on the men's side at the end of day one. Not as big of a change, but still a, a minor wrinkle in the rankings at the end of day one based off of that twist in the ranch loop. Matt Fraser, he's blown away the competition. No shock there. 475 points, four first and a second on the day. But Noah Olsen uh, able to move up one position based off where he was at the turn to where he wrapped up the trail run. And that's the difference between him being in a podium position and off of the podium at this stage of the game. Uh, still a lot more to come, but one day in the books, uh, a good finish for him there to give him some momentum heading into day two. How about the winners of all five of our events so far? No shock that Matt Frazier is dominating, but just how dominant he's been. Uh, he, he always finds a way to impress us. Four event wins, and even on the one where he... He came up short against Jeffrey Adler. He kind of eyeballed him afterwards, just kind of say, I, I know where I am. I know what I want to do on this event. Uh, Adler does get an event win on day one, but uh, you almost get the feeling Matt Frazier, you know, could have uh, pushed it a little bit more if he wanted to and, and taken that one, almost like he let it happen there. Surprises on the men's side uh, for you guys from day one. More happy surprises for me. Justin Madero's once again, I just think he finished strong. It's tough to overemphasize how much it matters having experience. Being a veteran at the games is a big deal. You don't get rattled as much. You've been there before. You kind of know some of the tricks that are getting thrown at you. Being a rookie is a significant disadvantage. So being thrown into this you know, school with the big fish, I'm very impressed. I mean, he's walking away at the end of day one with three second places and two fifths. Those two fifths kind of shook me a little bit. I was like, ah, I don't know if maybe Medeiros isn't the real deal, but man, closed out strong with a second and a second in the final two events. And what has really impressed me, he's now bumped himself back up into second place right behind Fraser. It is how he's competing. He's obviously fit. He earned a spot here, but his between the ears strength is impressive. And I think that has to come from He's a former wrestler. These guys are just tough as nails, and it's paying big dividends here. And for me, it was actually Noah Olson. And I'm going to say the biggest surprise really came at the very beginning of the competition. So we start event one, and in, we kind of picked up exactly where we left off last year. We have Noah going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Matt on that first event, but he quickly fell off the pace and picked up a fifth-place finish in the first event, not what we thought we were going to see out of Noah uh, starting the, the games this year. Well, then what does he do? He backs it up with a third third place finish on the corn sack sprint, a third place finish on the total, which considering strength is not Noah's, uh, you know, absolute strength is not Noah's forte. That was great. And then two more third place finishes. So again, while Noah doesn't need to win any events necessarily, he has got to stay away from those fifth place finishes. And looking at what he did from um, events two through five, I think he's doing what he needs to do. Let's take a look at what's ahead for all of our athletes tomorrow, day two, or at least what we know is ahead. There's always that unknown quantity. Uh, you've got uh, several Iron, Rogue Iron Game shows for you to break down all the action, but there are three events currently on the schedule. Toes to bar with lunge combination, a snatch speed triple, and the bike repeater. Always the opportunity for that unknown wrinkle, as we uh, saw today, obviously, by both between events being announced and then uh, an extension of an event as well. What are you guys' expectations for tomorrow? Oh, man. I mean, th this is going to be such a mental, already has been, but such a mental battle for these athletes, especially with what just happened there on event number five. You have to think that literally nothing is off the table. So every event that you're going into, there could be this unexpected twist and turn. You're going to be second guessing your pacing and your strategy. It's going to probably drive the coaches insane. So on top of the physical toll the events have had, now the mental anguish has just, it's been upped by a factor of 10. Right, and beyond that, I, I mean, most of these athletes, although they are superhuman, uh, at this point are probably feeling like a Mack truck just ran over their so. legs when you, again, take into consideration the corn sack sprint and what that did to their legs. The three, uh, the three attempts at both the back squat max and the deadlift max, and then that trail run to finish. Uh, you know, they're getting in these ice baths as part of recovery. They probably have some body workers back where they are. The question is, 
is that enough to recover, especially when you look at what they're going into on day two? Looking at the overall standings, our defending champions are right where we expected to them to be in first place, but uh, maybe a little bit of a difference in terms of the length of their advantage. Uh, panel, I'll start with you for Matt Frazier. He's up 220 points. What is it going to take for anyone to be able to make up some of that ground? Oh, I, I wish I could create something here. I'm sorry. You know, it's kind of like I said on show number one. I think what we're going to witness with Fraser is utter and complete domination and and no one no one being able to stop him from doing what many people said was an unrealistic goal and that is winning the crossfit games five times we are seeing history in the making we are seeing utter domination and not utter domination by an, an average field mind you he has that substantial of a lead over the next four fittest human beings on the face of the earth and he looks like he's competing against himself it's absolutely mind-boggling all right, you ready? I'm going to stir up a little drama right here. All right, here, here so, we go. So, uh, you know, Tia, obviously, we thought she was going to dominate this competition. Now, we knew on a handstand walk, when you're looking at the field of ladies that she's up against, that's not going to be her event. But for me, seeing her kind of walk a little bit in the middle of that trail run, right. um, and again, everybody was walking, but there was a look on Tia's face when she was walking, uh, and specifically during that back half of the run, that I just haven't seen on Tia in a long time. I, I think she's gonna come back with more fire from that, but it, that more than the handstand walk, to me was the first time we saw kind of the human side of Tia Claire to me. And there's also the factor of momentum. Katrin Davidstar clearly feels good with that event win that uh, she kind of was able to take away with the extension of that run. Uh, that might loom large in the events ahead. So five events are in the books. We've got two days left ahead. What are you guys clothing, closing thoughts on day one? I'll keep it short and sweet. Two points. Number one, I love seeing the, the younger faces, the next generation getting ready to take the torch. You know, we're talking about Haley Adams and Justin Medeiros. And then in the second part is don't fall in love with the leaderboard. However it looks right now, it will look wildly different after each one of these upcoming events. And for me, it would be, you know, they, Dave always promises this is going to be the hardest games and there's going to be the unknown and the unknowable. And I'll be honest, at this point, I'm like, yeah, 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 we've heard it all before, Castro. Well, you put your money where your mouth was for me today. That was not what I expected. I definitely think that uh, mentally, physically, this could have been one of the toughest first days of the CrossFit game. So I'm very impressed. Hats off to you, Mr. Castro. It was certainly a surprise. We'll see what kind of lingering effect that might have. If athletes are crossing finish lines from here on out and saying, are we really done? Are you sure, exactly. Dave? <laughs> It'll be interesting to see. We've had a lot of fun watching it here from our home away from home CrossFit brethren in Morgan Hill. We appreciate them uh, allowing us to hang out with them and uh, watch all these events. We appreciate all of you tuning in as well. A reminder, we've got plenty of action to cover the next couple of days. We'll have several events we know about, maybe some wrinkles we don't yet. It'll be a, a very, very entertaining day of CrossFit, and we'll have it all for you right here at CrossFit Brethren in Morgan Hill. That's going to do it for us. Our coverage will continue tomorrow for the 2020 Reebok CrossFit Games at 9.40 a.m. local here on the West Coast, 12.40 on the East Coast. For Pat Sherwood and Annie Sakamoto and our entire crew, I'm Sham Farber saying it's been a pleasure and a privilege having you with us here from day one of the Reebok CrossFit Games and our Rogue Iron Game set.